Hi, my name is Mark Fulcher, and I'd like to show you how I examine the lumbar spine. Before we have a look at Jesse's back, though, I'm going to ask him to do some walking. So if you can get up on your tiptoes and do some walking, so that's a good screen for the S1 myotome. And then if we get you on your heels and do some heel walking, this is a good screen for the L5 myotome. So no problems walking on his tiptoes or on his heels. So we're thinking that his power is grossly normal at this point. It's important to have a look at the lumbar spine. So we're going to ask Jesse to take his shirt off. Patients with lumbar spine pain are often very uncomfortable. So simple tasks like taking your shirt off can often be quite sore. So it's useful to keep a, a close eye on how they're moving and how things are working. I'd like to have a look from side on. So if we get you to turn side on to the camera there, Jesse, we're having a look at the normal lumbar lordosis. And so patients who have a very painful low back, they stand quite erect and they lose that normal lumbar lordosis. We get you to turn facing away. Um, you need to have a look at the, the lumbar spine in its entirety. So we're having a look down through the midline, having a look to see if there's any evidence of a scoliosis. Patients with discogenic pain will often have a shift. Uh, and so we're having a look at the overall alignment. Having inspected, we're going to have a look at Jesse's range of motion. And we're going to ask Jesse to, to bend forward, try and touch his toes, keeping his knees straight. So looking to ha see whether there's any pain or problems with lumbar flexion. If you get to stand up tall again, Jesse, it's a, a good way to quantify that is to have a look at where the fingertips reach. So I'll write, the athlete is able to forward flex until the fingertips reach the ground. The athlete is able to forward flex until the fingertips reach the ankle joint line. Then I'll ask him to, to extend his lumbar spine, so lean further back over my thumbs there, Jesse. So looking to see if he has any pain or problems. So no issues with that. In general terms, pain with flexion, I think uh, you typically see with discogenic pain and pain with extension. That's making me think more about a PARS defect, although those are not uh, hard and fast rules. Next thing we do is ask Jesse to sit on the side of the bed. So in this position, I think that's a good opportunity to test the athlete's neurology. So we can test power in all myotomes. We can assess sensation uh, to light touch in each dermatome and we can assess reflexes. So I think it's a good opportunity to do it with the athlete sitting on the side of the bed. So with the athlete lying down, I then move on to do a straight leg raise. So similar test looking for radicular pain. So we're gonna have the athlete lying nice and comfortable. His leg is fully extended and I passively take his hip into a position of flexion, asking them whether that causes them any leg pain. So any pain or problems with that, Jesse? So if the athlete did develop pain, so say we're able to flex to about 30 degrees and they start to become painful, we'd say, where is that pain? They'd say the pain is in their leg. And then we would ask whether it gets better or worse with ankle dorsiflexion. So you need to be quite careful with that because this is a very painful thing to do if the athlete has uh, radicular or uh, referred pain. So ankle dorsiflexion, we'd expect to make the pain worse. Ankle plantar flexion, we'd expect to make the pain better. Knee flexion, we'd expect to make the pain better.